Dear Lord, thank you for this gathering again. Lord, we just want to live the way that you called us to live, Lord. Help us today with looking at your word, looking at the truth of your, your gospel. Um, Lord, we are so grateful that you've given us food, Lord Jesus, and opportunity and just to have a relationship with you. We thank you for our transportation. We thank you for the, the things um, that we're able to operate with, a roof over our head, clothes on our back, Lord. We are very grateful we just ask, Lord Jesus, that you show us and teach us exactly uh, what you want us to learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so um, what I'd like to talk about, there's many things, because there is there's a shift coming where we're going to have to be a little bit more, what's the term? We're going to enter an era where we're going to have to change our approach. What I mean by that is God is raising people up that are going to really, really do his will. And to do his will, you got to be sold out. Like, seriously, you got to be like, I know what I know and I know him. Right. Like, if you don't know God. Most Christians, when I say professing Christians, they really don't know God that well. They don't know his word. They don't know his scriptures. You know, some, some people would argue, I, at least people I've known that have kind of come through the ministry, discipleship, even men of God that I've worked with and labored with um, throughout the years. They'll be like, They'd be like, something changed, you know? They've talked to me and they'd be like, something changed. Like 15, 16 years ago, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I was like a babe in the gospel. But they were like, nah, I mean, I talked to you two years ago and you ain't this deep. Like something shifted. So they started asking me, what changed in your habits? I had to talk to these brothers. I had a, I was on a, it, it turned into a conference call. I was actually on the phone with three dudes. One of them was, a guy I've been serving in ministry for 30 years. Another one was another person for 20 years. But I was making some corrections in the moment. And um, they were kind of like, how do you have this revelation and insight? Like, we've been walking with the Lord for a long time. Like, what, when in the world happened to you? And then they said, is it okay if you just share with us? And I check in with God, like, I really want to talk to these brothers right now. <laughs> but the Lord said, pour into them, talk to them, give them the update. So they ended up, like, they ended up tying people in. It was like on a WhatsApp or whatever. It ended up being 15 brothers on the line, like all different levels in their faith. And I told them, you know, basically, I started to really believe those scriptures. Like, I stopped looking at them as, like, something that was just kind of, like, I don't know, like, symbolic or just, you know, a principle that I can live by. But it was like, no, I can really, really do this. Like, if these people did it there, then I should be able to live it now. Because if Jesus Christ, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is the same, what? Yesterday, today, and forevermore. So his word is the same, right? Yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the Holy Ghost is the same. If the Holy Ghost comes in Jesus' name, that's what the Bible says, the spirit of promise, the spirit of truth will come in whose name? He said, will come in my name, my authority, my specific name, Jesus. He represents me on this earth. So if I know that, then that's how we got to live by. Amen? And so, practice, everything started to change because I took this word and um, made it valuable. I made it re reality. And this is what God wants from us. When we've been going over the last few weeks, months, or whatever of stuff, and you guys have been learning stuff, I'm sure I might even try to like, this ain't no toot my own horn, but let's just be real. Like, y'all probably seen more word in the last few months, even for you, maybe even a few weeks, than you've seen in going to other congregations. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they they specifically, thank you, Lord, they want to give y'all this. 
and say, survive off of this. One little kernel. And then the whole week, you just like, how do I survive off that? But you're so used to that, that's all you knew. And then I just, boom, put down a, what do you call, I'll just say ribeye for him. And then I'll put like, you know, what do you call, eggplant parmesan for you or something like that, right? <laughs> and then you'd be like, ooh, this is good food right here, right? This, this, this tastes right. That's the thing. The, the Bible says, taste and see that the, that the Lord is good. So whatever we're eating and we're consuming, that's what you become. And so God wants us to make sure that we are consuming the right thing. This word, though, we need more than just a popcorn kernel. <laughs> we need to make sure we consistently. I know for some people it's like, oh, my gosh, this is overboard. Like you're telling me come on Tuesday, then we got discipleship, then we got this. And then in my mind, I'm like, uh, if you signed up for ministry, this thing is your life. Like you are married to this thing. You know, that's the reality. And then and then if you even get into ministry, like you have to have a lifestyle where it's not like you're just like like when we prepare for messages. Right. It wasn't a thing where it was like. I need to just learn about this topic and this is what I'm going to talk about. No, you need to just read your word. It needs to be your daily diet. You're daily building up that spirit man on the inside. Your spirit man can't survive off the, the food our natural man operates from. It's a beautiful thing to prosper in your body. But the Bible says your bodily exercise profits what? Little. But spiritual exercise profits great. So there's the things that we have to do. So going and getting into this word, God is trying to get us into a place of order and um, and structure. And what I mean by that is it's not so much, excuse me, order and protocol. A lot of times people will do things in these congregations and you'll see a certain order. But then you go to their house and everything's just messed up. And you're like, how's that work? How you act like this when you're at church and then you go to somebody's house? I've seen it plenty of times where people were like, they don't know how to marry. They don't know how to let their private and public life coincide with God's word. That's what God wants for the people here. He tells me all the time. Sometimes I want to talk about other stuff, you know. I can get way deep with you guys. We could talk about different religions, all types of stuff. But the Holy Spirit right now wants to make sure that our private and our public life is rooted in this word. Amen. And so we talked about something last week. I don't know if you guys remember. It was in uh, first, first Peter. We're actually going to go back to that if you guys don't mind going. But um, it's going to get a little touchy. <laughs> It's a it's a good touchy though. Um, I guess when does it ever not get touchy when I when I talk about things? But the reason why the reason why I'll I'll put it this way: Have you ever noticed that when you really look at the Word of God now than before, it's very challenging, right? Like it's more challenging than maybe you thought it would be. And what I mean by challenging is. It comes against our social norms. It comes against our customs and behaviors. But the reality is, if you're a new creation, should you be following social norms? Should you be following the customs and behaviors of this world? We don't realize how much the world has impacted our, our psyche, our emotions, our handling of one another, right? Like, that's the part where... The more we learn about God's word, it becomes like this. Um, it becomes this light where it can show us like, OK, this area of my life, I never really looked at it this way. Right. And we're going to go over things like that because we're going to have to really share this. I believe you guys um, and the people that come down the road, you're going to have to live it. You have to breathe it and then you're going to have to implement it. You got to implement it in your homes. You're going to have to implement it in your conversations, how you handle things like some things won't be tolerable. Like right now, there's things in your household and in your life that won't be tolerable months from now. They won't be tolerable for sure 
by next year, especially the responsibility that God may put right in front of you. He's going to be like, and this is why I always say, God watches what you're responsible of. He always does. You guys ever heard of the, uh, the you, you guys ever went to, uh, I remember when I used to go to, uh, not, 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 not the whack. I am almost about to say planet fitness. That's like the whackness. Sorry if anybody goes there, but, um, that's like the place where people are on trap machine, trap machines. And then they have like a pizza, pizza in their hand. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? But I used to go to, what's the one? It's not 24 hour fitness. It's the other one, LA fitness. So I used to go there. Right. And I remember one time I was like, you know, you go through the workout and you just like, Ooh, man, I, I go 300 calories on this rower. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, water can't do too much. So I have to get some type of electrolytes or something. And I went to the vending machine and I put the thing in and then it like took my dollar and some change. I was like, wait a second, hold on. So I started hitting the vending machine, <laughs> trying to get something to open up. And you guys ever encountered something like that, that can be very frustrating. Amen. Mm -hmm. So once you put it in and you see nothing comes out, you either going to try to find somebody to fix it, or are you going to get more money out of your pocket and put it in? Of course not. Right. Cause you like, you ain't taking no more of my money. That ain't happening. What's even more cold is when you don't tell people behind you, like, yeah, basically they took more money. Guys get the door, please. But that's the kind of thing that we're dealing with here. Now, let me reverse it for a second. Now, just imagine you've already put your money into it. You want what's in that. You want what's coming out of that. But you're not getting you're not getting those results. Hey, praise the Lord. Good to see you guys. Take a seat wherever you guys feel. As long as you don't knock the camera. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so. Talking about things like that. When I was like LA Fitness was my spot for a minute. All right. I put in the work. Okay. And I remember going back to that vending machine thinking like, man, I'm going to put another dollar up in this thing or not. And then it worked. Right. Somebody fixed it. Amen. So then I felt like, hey, I can go back to that thing. But the first time I was just like, hey, when it took my dollar that first time, I was just like, that's not going to happen. Why is this important? Because you're like, you're talking about vending machines. Okay. okay. No, hear, hear me in the spirit. Y'all going to catch it in a second. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Why would God put something in your life if he knows he's not going to get a return? Why? He gives you something, you're not responsible over it, and then you expect more. Ain't gonna happen. See, this is why I'm trying to tell everybody right now. If you can catch one thing out of this, whatever God gives you, you're responsible for it. He will give you more, but he's not going to be like, hey, she broken. He broken. I ain't pouring more into that. Get in what? Order. That's what God's talking about tonight. He wants to make sure we're not out of order. When something is out of order, he don't put nothing in it. I'm trying to tell you. I learned that. I try to like change God's methods. And God looking at me like from heaven like, nah, I ain't doing that. That's what I'm saying. There's things in your life, people, relationships, friendships, family, house, stuff that's just out of order. And we're trying to act like it's something that God don't want to like look at. Like we just try to keep like a little space from it. And then we say, Lord, 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 put another dollar in me. <laughs> I'll put this out. Don't don't worry. Just pour this into me. And God's like, nah, that's out of order. I ain't going to get nothing out. See, God wants to make sure he fix. He repairs things in our lives. Amen. So we can be what? Productive. So when he puts something in, he knows he's getting something back. Amen. And when you get that, you know, hey, I'm responsible for this thing, right? It could be a person, it could be a situation in your house. It could be like, all right, it could be something that you're trying to stop from doing. For example, I remember for like the last, what do you call season? Uh, it's not, not like this now, but I was, having a, I was having a little weird moment. They know about two years ago where I started listening to this voice. And this voice was telling me, 
hey, go buy this, go buy that. I started buying so much unnecessary things. It wasn't even funny, right? Because I was operating a lot of abundance from business and all this stuff. And I was buying this, I was buying that. She knows about it. And then all of a sudden, and then my wife started joking on me. She said, you got more shoes than Jeremiah. And I'm like, well, he barely going to wear them. He said, he would grow out of them in like one month. But this is my size. And I kept rationalizing with myself, I need these clothes. I need these shoes. I need this stuff. I didn't need that stuff. Right? Now I'm, I'm finding myself basically reselling everything on eBay. <laughs> because obviously times are tough. But I'm saying that and I gave away a bunch of stuff to the homeless. But there was something talking to me saying, you need to do this with your money. And the reality is I could have spent it way better, you know? And then I asked God, Lord, help me. Like, Lord, send more finances to me. <laughs> and God's like, you mishandle what I gave you. Because you're what? Out of order. I'll put it this way and I'll speak to this. If you got something talking to you before you go to bed, like I used to be like that. I ain't gonna lie. When it comes to sneakers, like there's a sneaker app. There's a, there's a Nike sneaker app. Uh, literally, it's called like sneaker app. <laughs> and literally, I'll be waiting for like the next thing to come out and I get notification. I'll wake up like six in the morning to try to get them shoes. It's sad. I'll be like, man, I gotta get these, you know? And I didn't realize I had to pray for whatever was influencing me off of my life because I knew it wasn't God. I was obsessing with things, you know? And so I say that because God wants to get things in order. He wants our lives to be shaped. He doesn't want us. He wants us to be excellent stewards over our time, over our relationships, amen, and our resources, Okay, whatever God has put you entrusted over, he wants you to be a steward. A steward is not necessarily an owner, right? A steward is like someone, like, like the Bible explains, just imagine if there's a farmer, right? Or an owner of a piece of land. And then the person that is entrusted to look over the land is a steward, is a manager. That's what you are. The reality is that we don't really own anything, guys. I know we can say it's like, that's my phone. That's my house. That's my this. If you don't pay a few payments on your mortgage, like it's the banks. OK, and even then, when God burns all this stuff up and the whole world sees them in the sky, who really owns everything? Jesus. Amen. So we need to know the order right now is that there's not so much stock you can put in this life like we can kind of enjoy things and navigate but we still have to have this mindset of, okay, how do I line up my life now with God's will and how do I get in his order? Amen. So let's look at first uh, Peter again. We were looking at it, <laughs> believe it or not. I don't know why my phone is uh, acting like it can't. Oh, that's why it's on a different, um, it's on a different Wi-Fi. but I'm going to show it on the screen in a second. So you guys could take a look. Uh, praise God. You guys are already there? Mm -hmm. Amen. Quick, quick, draw McGraw. Okay. <laughs> That's just a term, sorry. I'll be using straight old school terms. I know, I forgot, man. So, uh, let's see if you guys can see it behind. I don't even know. This thing going to connect. Did it connect already? No? No, yeah, there's a cool box on it. Nice. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Smart view. Okay, yeah, let me see. Google Cast. Let's see if it connects. Come on. Oh, come on. I may have to do it on the other thing. Can you get the other phone? Or no, sorry. Let's go to chapter two. Yes. Chapter two. And what else? All right. Chapter two. And let's see the verse. 
We already read this part, but there's one part that the Holy Spirit wanted me to show you guys just for a second. Okay, go to 13. When everyone's there, they can say, Amen. <laughs> Bless you. All right, so 1 Peter chapter 2, 13 says this. It says, For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It says, It is God's will that you that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. It says, for you are free, yet you are God's slaves. Okay, let's hold on for a second. Let's just let's just analyze that just for a second. Submit to authority. Amen. The reason why I always stress this is because whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not, even if we're a person that's like outspoken and we see injustice in the world and we want to be a SJW social justice warrior. <laughs> um, the reality is you can't be swayed by Instagram posts or Facebook or all the other people are promoting on these different news networks. You have to be in line with what the word of God is saying, what the Holy Spirit is speaking. You understand? You are really a part of a different kingdom now. And the majority of this world, no, excuse me, Lord, forgive me. All of this world has been deceived by the enemy, the entire world. The whole world is divided up into layers of not just demonic oppression, spiritual oppression, meaning and there's principalities, thrones, there's systems that are influencing the news you see, everything. And it's all what? Anti-God or anti-Christ or anti-you, really. They're, anti they're against you of what, what, how they want you to live. Now, God is saying submit to the authority because of all authority comes from him, no matter what. So when you come against authority, that's why I joke. I joked around the other day. I think I was talking about it. But I was like telling everybody, like, I'm family in y'all in God. Like, we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen? But on this earth right now, because God has designated me with authority that comes from above, I'm, I have to operate in that. I can't, even if I'm like, I don't act extra studious, like I used to wear suit and ties and people would respect me a certain way. Now I'm all cash out. People don't even know. Like when I talk to them, they'd be like, they can't even tell. They'd be like, I mean, how can you tell someone's a man of God? But they can't tell that I'm a person of authority, right? But the moment I start speaking to them, let them know, they're like, ooh, okay, this dude's different, right? And so what we have to establish is in our protocols, whether we be in a congregation or here or wherever, that we respect the authority that's set. I find it, I would find it hard to believe that people, you got to understand, from Peter to Paul to Timothy, I would have it hard to believe that if they're leaders over a church, that people would just kind of treat them a certain way. What I mean by that is, I'm not saying that they were looking for the glory, but there was a certain honor that came with their position. Amen? Just like we honor doctors, we honor lawyers, we honor certain people that have, you know, quote unquote, uh, did what they need to do in order to be in these professional positions. How do we honor people of the Lord? You know, the Bible says that an elder, which I'm an ordained elder, I'm literally an elder before God. Like I don't care about the piece of paper and all that other stuff. Don't matter about, I'm saying whatever you do before the Lord Jesus Christ, heaven witnesses and whatever happens God sets that person. The Bible says promotion comes to the Lord. So when I communicate, I'm not communicating out of my own authority. I'm saying, hey, I have a responsibility. I've, I have enough fear of God now where I say, hey, if God puts people in next to me, I look at it as the Lord says, hey, I'm sending people here to help you prepare and help them grow so that they may operate in my kingdom fully. You understand? That's my goal. That at least that's what 
the command of the Lord is for me and I'm trying to fulfill because I got to stand before him. Now, for you guys and anyone else that comes, you can't look at the situation like, oh, he's just like this and he ain't even like, you know, a day over 50, blah, blah, blah. Like, he don't look like no, because this is what a lot of people do. They'll automatically assume a lot and then not understand that what you're doing is you're one, you're usurping God's authority. You're questioning who God calls. And I'm going to tell you right there, if you have, and I, and I joked about this, and I'll remind it again. The reason why I'm so stressed on this is because the Lord tells me we have to get that right. We cannot look at each other and not honor. Because I'll tell you this, you guys are going to grow and you're going to hate it when somebody disrespects your, and, and dishonors you. Like, if some of y'all are called to be prophets, pastors, whatever it is, right? Evangelists, different things. Just imagine if someone's like, oh, you ain't legit because you didn't do this or you didn't go to Bible college or you didn't do this. How disrespectful is that? Because what they're saying is they're almost saying like what you went through in God is not legitimate because they have a standard already set. God wants to make sure we clear all that up. I love it. You know, I joked about this before. He knows. I said, hey, to honor the things of God, no one was coming up to the Apostle Peter or Apostle Paul or even Timothy or any of those guys. And they were saying, hey, bro, what's up? You know why? Because they diminish like you ain't come to no president and be like, well, I don't know the president right now. Maybe <laughs> that's on another story. But I'm saying that when people have authority, you're not just going to come at them a certain way. I'm very casual. But I still know that at the end of the day, I'm not going to let nobody bring down the authority that God has put in place. Because if you respect that authority and you respect the things of God, you won't do that. You won't say, hey, that's why I ask everybody here. Hey, call me elder. Call me Jones, uh, Pastor Jones. But don't deal with me like I'm, I'm, I'm trust me. I'm very kind of sort of friendly <laughs> when I need to be. But. The reality is I have an obligation not to be everybody's friend. I have an obligation to operate in my gifting as an apostle, as a teacher to say, hey, I need to pour into these people because I can go before God. God will literally deal with me if I try to be like, I'm buddy, buddy with everybody and I'm just trying to cater to everybody's feelings. And then Lord be like, you still want to continue? Because if, if you want to continue, you better tell the people the truth. You better tell what's needed for them to grow because what's going to happen is you guys are going to develop and then people are going to try to kind of like, they're going to try to undermine what you went through, your testimony, which by the way, no one can take that from you. Okay. And then they're going to undermine your gifts. They're going to say like, oh, you ain't that because so-and-so, you know, you, you didn't come from this organization or whatever. There's so much nonsense that's out there, guys. If you know you're in Christ, you're in Christ. But the job right now for me is to get everybody from babe, child, teenager, adult, mother, father. When you're a true mother and father in the gospel, you are birthing people. You are literally helping people be a part of this. You understand? I've got to that place where I help y'all. All y'all was affected by my witness. Amen. This is be honest. So and many other people have been. And so what I'm trying to do is make sure that you guys 100 percent know that we will honor each other. We will honor each other's gifts, regardless of where our status is faith wise. You understand? But then when God starts to elevate, we honor that, too. So we just don't do it because I'll tell you right now. If I spend enough time with y'all and y'all see some person out the blue come up a certain way, like come at, come, come at someone like, uh, for example, I guess I don't want to get into a moment of prophecy, but let's say in the future, the Lord elevates you. You understand? And things start happening. I'm going to tell you right now, your family ain't going to accept it out the gate. They're going to be like, oh, that's Danny boy. See what I'm saying? They're going to try to pull you down. From where they, where they last met you at. I call it the pause play moments, right? 
Like you can meet people a few years back and they may see Sister Jackie and be like, what's up, girl? Blah, blah, blah. And then they press play from the moment they remember you at the club and all that other stuff. And you like, oh, hold on. You got to fast forward a whole lot of stuff because I'm now a child of God. I'm really in this thing now. I was just playing church. Now I know, no, no, God. Right. I seen him. And so that's what we have to make sure we protect that. You understand? Does that make sense? This is not me getting into like any moment. I just want y'all to understand that. That's why we're here. God bless you. We're here because we want to make sure that we honor each other and we don't operate out of order. Okay? Because that's the thing. God will continue to pour things into us as long as we are not what? A broken vending machine. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> you know, he puts something in us, he expects something out, and he like, ain't nothing coming out. And then you expect another dollar to go back in, it's like, it ain't gonna happen. Amen? Like, until you get yourself in order, then he'll start putting more things into you. And then you'll get something out. And you'll be like, oh, great. So God is saying, manage these things. So I want y'all to know this is, a, this is, this is not, trust me. You, we're going to go through the scriptures and y'all going to see. Me calling myself that, it's not that I called myself that. I was actually ordained as an elder. You understand? Back in 2009. As the Bible says, it says, when you set a, point, a person apart for the ministry, I went from... Uh, from uh, pre, uh, what do you call it? Uh, from a deacon to minister to lay minister to uh, uh, operate, uh, what do you call it? practicing elder to elder. You understand the Bible and the word elder, all it means, elder and bishop mean the same thing, they just mean episcopos and, pres and presbyter. That's the that's your actual Greek word, presbyteros. All it means is an overseer, a person that can oversee God's people. And when there's responsibilities, you have to be apt to teach. You have to be apt to preach. You have to labor in God's word. And you have to be ready to give up everything for the flock. Everything. You can't be like, well, I don't know about that. No. The Bible even says that once you pick up this gospel plow, if you turn back and say, well, I think I'm missing some things. Maybe I'll get some things in my past. The Bible says you're unfit. You're unfit for it. You understand? So I knew that. Many of you guys don't know. I left corporate jobs. I left positions. I stepped out literally on the water. I was in a Christian bookstore reading the word and I got demoted. I got the day I got baptized in Christ Jesus. I got demoted. Is that like a coincidence? I was crying and stuff. Went outside and my bishop called me and said, oh, yeah, you need to expect that. Like when you're doing things unto the Lord, the tax is right around the corner. So I had to learn how to suffer because I didn't really deal with that first. Like I was just like, you know, like I call honeymoon phase. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm Jesus. I was like, everybody by Jesus. I was at I was at the pizza parlor. We was at round table pizza. I think he was a baby. No, she, you weren't even born yet. But Jeremiah, because he had the little curly hair. I was just like this. Oh, it's your baby. I was telling everybody about Jesus. It didn't matter. Like I could be looking at you know, whatever, we ordering breadsticks, and I'd be like, you know, Jesus? And then people would just be like, what's up with this dude, right? I didn't have no technique, no nothing. I was just like, you know, bubbling for joy. And then boom, as soon as trials and tribulations hit, then I was just like, oh, hold on, what's, what's happening? Like, I didn't know that this was like a real thing, right? And I had to grow with that. But what, what God wants us to know is we have to follow authority. We got to honor each other. You understand? I'm, I'm, I'm not making the term up, right? Let's put that out there. I'm actually ordained elder. Yes, I'm operating as a temporary pastor in this congregation, in this fold, all right? But I, have, I am multi-gifted, you understand? I'm primarily operating as an apostle because I have to start things. That's what I did. I church plant, I built people up. And for me, I'm a, if, if I don't see people in this group, or in the other waves of people that I've dealt with in the past grow, I go nuts because it don't make no sense to me. You understand? So, and I have to be apt to evangelize all the things. So for me, and this is the reason why I'm stressing that I, I repeated that and I'll repeat it to you because you just came a little bit. When you grow in God and you get things in order and lined up with the will of God for your life, God will entrust you with more. When you trust you with more, that means he knows you're capable of doing more now. But with that, 
there's going to be some sacrifice. Your gifts and your callings, the Bible says gifts and callings come without, uh, are, are without, um, without repentance, meaning in God never turn, God never wants to snatch things away. He's saying you grow in them. So if you were grown in a gift, let's say you have, you know, evangelists, you know, and you end up getting elevated, like I mentioned to him. And let's say your family don't respect it. They're like, ah, no, I don't really believe you like that. You didn't go to Bible college, da, 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 da. whatever standard they think that's legit. But, you know, hey, no, God in heaven, I've grown to a place where I'm operating in this. The Bible says that we're supposed to honor. We're supposed to honor each other in those things. So if you start doing it now, it will come I'm telling you, it will follow you. It will follow you. But if, do you think Timothy being uh, Paul's disciple will come up to Paul and as much as they grew with each other and, you know, he knew his, his parents and everything else, do you think he would treat Paul like kind of like whatever, like, like we boys, yeah, what's up? Duh, 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 you know? No, nah, he wasn't going to deal with him like that. And so that's the thing for me, as much as, Y'all seem like heck of cool people. I could be like, man, let's go out. Let's just do this. And won't, 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 whatever. And I'm super cash. Like, I don't even talk like other <laughs> pastors and stuff like that. But I know my gifting. I know what I operate in. And I know the authority has been put on my life. And I want to make sure that everybody knows here, like, hey, God wants us to honor each other. And especially honor authority because it comes from God. It's not man-made. God puts it in order. All right. Whereas we're still at first Peter two, So I'm letting you know that because this could be a foundation because you guys will start rolling into these places and somebody's going to be like, who authorized you to do that? Who authorized you to preach? Who authorized you to say that? And then you're going to have to be like the Lord Jesus did. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you, it's how you deal with people now. Eventually, people will start dealing with you and saying, hey, I honor that. But if you out the gate off, if you're like already looking at people and men of God and women of God a certain way and trying to like dismantle them, that's why I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I know I say that and I sound like I, I make a lot of subtle jabs towards certain type of ministries. But to be honest with you, unless I see something really off, you ain't going to hear much from me because I feel like there's a variety of ways that the Lord can use different ministries. But I'm not one of those, like, uh, I call rock throwing ministries, boulder throwing ministries. <laughs> All they do is just throw stuff. You know what I mean? That's not what we on. I want to make sure that when I stand before God, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. Now I make you rule over many. And I hope that that's what you guys hear, too. That's why I am so um, passionate about making sure that whoever God sends I do as the best of my ability to make sure that we are all following the order of God. Amen. So with that first Peter, uh, excuse me, first, uh, first Peter, uh, chapter two thirteen. when I, when we're talking about that, that's what we honor, right? It says we're supposed to operate in authority or uh, are supposed to submit to human authority, right? Um, and then it says, it is God's will that you live honorable lives should silent at lives should silence ignorant people who make foolish accusations. So when people make accusations against you, don't let them be legit. <laughs> like it's nothing worse when like and this is and this is where we have to humble ourselves. Right. Because we know when we in the wrong or we should know when we in the wrong and then be like, all right. I didn't act like a woman of God. I didn't act like a man of God. I need to get this right. You know what I'm saying? Or you can, you can just be honest. And I'm telling you, it does more for that person than you trying to like hide in that ego. You know what I'm saying? God's like, nah, kill that. And trust me, I remember early in my walk, I would try to hide in the ego, that little realm of ego. And I'd be all talking crazy in the back. I'd get to almost a point where God had stopped me. Because I'd be like, I'll start talking about other men of God. And I'd be like, oh, no, nah, they was this. And if, I, if they ever talk to me like that again, like, and I'm like realizing, like, wait a second, I'm talking about men of God. Like, 
completely forget. And I can show you all some scriptures like the Bible says you we need to be we you got to be chill when it comes to talking about men of God. I'm just going to be real. If you don't have a fear of God, then and you start talking about men of God or women of God or whatever people in authority that God has placed, then it's like you're being foolish because the Bible says they bear not the sword in vain. Like the 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 sword the sword that is entrusted to a man of God is not for people that are following God. It's for people that start disobeying. You understand? And so there's 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 a balance to all of this. God doesn't want us to be like like that's that's for myself. Like my bishop used to always say, he'd be like, "Man of God, you have authority." He said, "But don't get too high." In pride, don't get too high and stuff like that's something that came from it didn't. He said, God is looking at you need to be a steward of the authority and the power that God has given. He said, but he said, don't let anyone ever dismantle or try to bring you down. He said, because what they could be doing is dishonoring the God in you. That's what they can be doing, literally. And so you got to find that place of like, okay. I want to be in God's order, but I don't want ego and all that stuff to take over. So, and I, by the way, God literally almost died. I think the first time you guys showed up, I was, I was sharing a testimony. I almost died in the snow. That was, that was my last time of ego. Like my last for sure. Like I tell you, when I stopped, y'all don't understand what I said to God. Uh, the bishop screaming on the phone because it's on the ground. He's like, elder. Elder, you okay? And then I just looked at God and I said, you know what you know what I said? I didn't even say thank you. Guess what I said? I said, I get it. <laughs> I get it. No, I said I get it. I get it. Like it was almost like uh he was just like, get out of line one more time. Get out of line one more time and see what happens. Right. Like you need to really have this healthy fear. I'm protecting you the whole way. Like you keep operating like I'm not involved in every aspect of your life. Like your life could have been gone just like that. Mm -hmm. And then you would have had to talk. I would have had to confess to Jesus why I was practically raising my voice at my bishop. Like he was not a man of God. You know what I mean? I was letting like anger and pride and ego take over me in the moment. And then everything shut straight. I was just like, Ooh, okay. I got to get myself right with God. And he was just like, yeah, I'm protecting you. Now get up on that road, get back to your family, embrace them, and do what your bishop was saying. And I had, to, I had to learn that, right? Now for us, because God says he wants everything in order, amen? Uh, this is another part of it. It says, 16, for you are free, yet you are God's slaves, okay? So you're free from this world, but the reality is in exchange, you're really God's slaves, okay? You want to be committed to God. It says, so don't use your freedom as a what? Excuse to do evil, like many, many people do. It says, respect everyone and love the family of believers. Okay, we're going to hold that right there. Love the family of who? God, the believers. Fear God and respect the king. All right? Now I'm going to fast forward real quick because I know we read this part before. And it talks about, it says, for God call, I always love to do context, okay? Context is basically like this. This whole Bible was never written like this chapter two, this chapter four, this verse, this. No, none of it was like that. It was just literally like letters they were writing to these churches, you know, and you got to see, it's almost like this. You guys ever write letters to people? I remember back in the day, I didn't write letters to my wife, but I used to write letters to other people. She probably had her little ex-boyfriend and stuff write letters to him and be like, mm. I was all joking with her. I was just like, y'all find any old letters, y'all better throw them away. Oh, throw all that stuff. But it makes me laugh though, like how we used to, yeah, before it was texting and all that. Yeah, we used to write letters. Yeah, just a little goofy stuff. But you write a letter and it would take you usually, like for me, it'd take me like two pages to finally get to the point, right? <laughs> like, if you like, you just skirting around the issue, you know? Or even, I, I can remember, I can imagine, like, even when the first time I, I told uh, Mabel, my wife, when the first time I told her that I loved her, right? Um, 
it took like it was like at least an hour man like i was just like trying to like work around stuff and i was like so basically what i'm trying to try to put this song on and try to express it through the song and she just like what in the world is wrong with him you know and i couldn't even like say it and i was like so basically i mean you know last time i was at the krispy kreme and you know like how i like those donuts and then she's just like what are you trying to say i was just like I, you know I, I i love you i love you like i think i'm falling in love with you like you know it took me a hundred years to get that out that's a real man right there it took a minute you know and i was just like how do i say that because i never said that to no woman before you know you can be like crushing on a person liking a person whatever but i never said that before like you know i think we we're in our early 20s or whatever when that happened but um but like letters they usually have like a train of thought amen when you're reading these letters it's always context like these apostles have a train of thought and eventually they're going to get to like the meat they're going to get to like the main thing they're trying to establish that's what's happening right now he's covering all these things but he's saying hey here's the main thing i set up one thing for the next all right so let's see what let's see what peter's setting up uh let's go i guess we'll just keep reading okay so 18 it says, you are you who are slaves must submit to your masters with all respect. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they're cruel. It says, for God is pleased when, uh, please when conscious of his will, you patiently endure unjust treatment. Basically, like when I got fired, not fired, but when I got demoted, I had to stay in this mindset of God, you're in control. You understand? Like as much as I was wanting to go off on the rest of my management, Cause I was just like, oh, y'all suckers, right? And then like, then a few months later, somebody broke into the store and stole a bunch of clothing the day I was at one of my good friend's wedding. And then somehow they all wanted to loop us in the thing. And guess who they sent first? They sent me out the store first. They, I wasn't even there. They was like, we feel like it was an inside job. I'm like, I've been with y'all for this many years and y'all thinking, you know, and it wasn't because of this, because it was, you know, it was a few Negroids up in there. Well, forgive me saying like that. But I'm just saying that they sent me to another store. And I was just like, and then they took the key and then they took my password. I was kind of like, what in the world? And then I could just literally hear like the Lord was just like, this is a part of your suffering. Like, I don't want you to put faith in this world. Like, I'm trying to show you that at any moment, all that great stuff you did, Fortune 500, you 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 set all these records in, a, in the San Francisco Bay Area. I was like the top dude. Then I started managing stores and all that stuff and going to retail, doing presentations at corporate. And the area manager, the top big wigs were loving me the whole night. It was already a few months before they were like, we want to send you to this store a little south of San Francisco to do. And I'm thinking like, oh, I'm moving up. They invited me to like galas, you know, because I used to work for Men's Warehouse, the guys who do the suits and corporate was in Fremont. And then uh, the guy that actually did all the commercials, the back in the day, it was this guy, old George Zimmerman. He used to say, I guarantee it, you know, his old. <laughs> I met him several times. He Like he's from Oakland. He's from North Oakland. It's a nicer part. But he uh, I was like literally eating sh shrimps and and they was like, you know, they had like the waterfall, like the chocolate waterfall. Like I was in that type of situation getting, getting, you know, cherries and all that. I was looking extra, not that hood, but I was walking up in there and they was like, I had a suit on, but I was like, they were not really like eating a lot. That's what I understand about rich folk. They'd be like having all this stuff, but they like plate be like, like barely anything. I'm over there. I got like three plates. I dropped down like this, like three plates of food. You know, like I ain't got no sense. I got like eight covered strawberries. I got like shrimps. I got like the cheese platter, everything. They looking at me like, brother, this brother don't eat. I'm like, nah, I'm taking advantage of the opportunity. That's what I'm doing. Right. So that's what I was in. And then all of a sudden now, a few months later, I got my key taken away from me. The more I kept pursuing the things of God, everything started to like on my outside world just started to seem like this is kind of like harsh like they basically saying i had something to do with this then they sent me another store and guess what you know what happened 
I ended up being the one to find out the very day. This is this is nothing but the Holy Ghost. The very day I got sent, I got sent to that store and a few weeks went by. I was talking to the management in the morning and I didn't even know why because I was like, y'all don't even treat me like a man. I had the name manager, but I was doing none of the manager stuff. They were just expecting me to just sell stuff and whatever. And I said, hey, you know, you guys should have a security protocol. A protocol. I used to jo I joke with them. Right? I said, you know, back in the day, me and my store manager, Chuck, I said, we used to say, hey, did you buy those tickets on Fandango? Whenever it'd be like 15 people or 10 people, I could kind of tell like, oh, they coming in a whole group about to steal everything, right? Leather jackets. I could see what they about to do. I was just like, because I've been there, you know? I was with groups back in the day when I was in high school. We used to do stuff like that. They'd be like, hey, man, take that out of your shirt. Take that out of your thing. Get out of my store before I call the police, right? And so I was already used to that. I was kind of like, all right, like, get your tickets on Fandango. I said, say something. They was just like, why would we say anything? And I was just like, y'all dumb, right? So then I just left it at that. A few hours later, this, 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 excuse my whatever, vernacular, this she-man of a woman walks in, like six foot eight. I don't know what she is, but she looked like, you ever see Shawn Michaels? Like literally, like, oh, oh but yeah, but yes, for real. But a woman version, but then had a deep voice and tattoos and then had a dress on and then was pushing a cart that was covered like a uh, like a uh, stroller. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, it's awfully hot. It's like August. Like what I asked. And I and then I saw something started clicking. Holy Ghost started talking to me and saying, those are the people that stole the stuff in San, in San Leandro store. San Leandro right near Oakland. And so I was kind of like. Really? And I had, I, and that, that was the time where I didn't really like take everything the Holy Spirit told me, but I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. And then I went to the guys and I said, hey man, can you watch that lady in the corner? It was, oh yeah, whatever. The, the woman with the, I said, why is she in the corner with the stroller? It's like, why? Just go talk to her. So I went up to her and said, how you doing, ma'am? She went like this. I said, what is all that flinching for? In my mind, like, what you flinching for? That's automatic. Whenever somebody flinching, I already know. I'm like, hey, no, we know. Something going off, right? And so she's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I say, you need some water? And then she goes, no, I'm fine. I say, how about the baby? What's the sex? She's looking at me like, you don't have to see right now. You know, he's sleeping. I was just like, okay. Because I had to like the blanket over, right? And I'm thinking to myself like, that's an extra big can't, like stroller. This thing was huge. So I tell all the other people, they eating, snacking, eating their curry and all the stuff in the back. And I walked up to Muhammad. I said, Muhammad, hey, uh, remember what he was talking about? Like, people, like, stealing stuff? He goes, he said, yeah, like, he wasn't tripping. He was just like, I need to eat. And I just looked at him and I said, hey, I think somebody's, like, robbing us right now. <laughs> like, not robbing us behind the court, but I think they're really, like, taking stuff. He's just like, are you sure? And I was just like, yeah. I said, come out in the front. And then another guy walks in. And a black dude with a kango. He looked like a buff Samuel Jackson. He walks in and he looks at me. And I looked at him and I'm like, dude, I've seen this dude before, right? And now I see the first time I saw them, I was helping one of them. I was helping him. He was casing the joint. So when we went on that Saturday in San Leandro, they went in and they took all the stuff, right? The day I was gone. But then this little stupid thing ended up being the thing that sent me to this other store. Now they're at that store. And now I'm kind of thinking like, wait a second, are these the same dudes? And I said, okay, maybe I'm making assumptions, but Holy Ghost speak to me. I go and I get all the management. We got four managers there. And I said, okay, mommy, stop eating your Indian curry. Come over here. I said, you got to do this. You got to do this exchange. The guy was returning and exchanging a suit. Had a tag on it. He said, oh, I don't want I don't want my original money. He said, just 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 put on a gift card. It's all good. Just put on a gift card. And then I looked at him and he looked at me and he said. And I, I just looked at him and he looked at me and he's like, I know you. And I'm like, you don't know me like that. And he's like, nah, I know you. And then I said, yeah. I said, you, if you knew me, I said, you knew what I would be on. I'm literally calling 911 right there like this. And so I'm just like talking. I say, yeah, about six bow, Kango hat. 
right? And then he starts he starts adding stuff up like I'm on to them. But the other guys were like, they just gone. They just thinking about all the other customers in the store, not worried about anybody else. And I finally just told him, I said, hey, this is what's up. Uh, I said, do you remember when I said buy your tickets on Fandango? They was just like, yeah, what are you talking about? So I don't go to the movies. I'm like, I'm like, guys, somebody's stealing something. Then I had to write it down plain on the ground, on the, on the paper. I said, lady over here, dude over here. I said, they off. Then he just, he throws, he throws the suit right there. He says, oh man, don't even worry about it. I'm like, who does that? He puts the suit down. Then he starts wanting to walk and say, hey, hey, hey. He, he says, whatever to the little she, she, she beast, whatever she is. He says, you know what I'm talking about, Brett Michaels, Shawn Michaels, whatever. She, she come over here and then they start going like this. And I said, I remember I told, I said, Paul, I said, all them guys. I was like, because you can legally, you can't. You can't like close the door <laughs> like you got the door closed, but you can't lock it. Right. Or at least they didn't think to. And so they, as soon as they went, they just went boom and just bust through the door and went straight to their car. They grabbed that stroller, threw it in the trunk so fast. I was just like, and then I talked to uh, the, the, my main manager, Jose, uh, what do you call? Uh, I call him, I call him detective Lopez and you'll see why I said, Jose, I said, you know, they just took all your stuff. And he's just like, he got like a hot pocket in his mouth. He's just threw it. And then he just start running outside. He hop in the car and then he start following him, start driving. And then I'm laughing because my district manager calls me and she says, what is going on there? She said, there's a high speed chase and the manager is, is, is following him. And I said, I told him not to do it. I said, we got insurance. I don't know what's wrong with him. You know why? Because the moment they took, like at that other store, when they took all the inventory, they took it out of our bonus. So I was supposed to get like three G's at the end of the year. Whoop, gone. Just like that. So he was probably thinking like, man, this fool taking my bonus. That ain't going to happen, right? So he chased them all the way to Milpitas. And what happened? The, the popo got them. And then guess what I did? I looked at the suit he was trying to return. And I looked at the SKU numbers. I called my boy at the other store that they deported me from. Nah, <laughs> they transferred me from. And I said, hey, go down to that list of them 25 suits they stole. I said, check me, check right now. He says, okay, Jay. I said, check this SKU number, blah, 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 52 extra large, blah, 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 blah. He goes, uh, yeah, yeah, it's on the list. I said, man, I just hung up on the phone. And then I said, okay, Lord, what's going on? And then he said, I showed this to you. He said, because I'm souring the milk. Y'all ever heard of that? I'm souring the milk. What you found in this world, you don't understand. I had made my job, my career, the idol. Okay. I had literally made everything that was in this world, like my idol. Then I come to God and now I'm free from it. God was trying to show me I'm free. You're free from this. Like I'm going to set you free, whether you, whether you like it or not. Like your real trust needs to be in me now. You need to be a slave to me. So as the scripture is saying to be free from the world, but to be slaves of God, God had to show that no matter what I would do to try to keep this thing. I was like, I was trying to keep this loyalty to them. And I opened it and the day after, I, you know, the district manager calls me and she's like, I'm glad you handled that. She says, good job. And you know how sour it was. Oh, Lord Jesus. I had to literally repent and forgive her. Because I was like, she had everything to do with why I was demoted, why I was sent, you know, because she didn't want me to excel. But God had a better plan. Amen. Amen. And so I had to tell her, I said, look, that's fine. She said, excellent job. She said, you actually caught the, the people. She said, we, they were able to uncover everything. They had hit like 20 stores in the Bay Area. So I was the dude that was responsible for that. Actually, the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost gave me the tip. Said it's them. It didn't even. It didn't even. It wasn't even like a. I didn't need to need other evidence. God just told me the spirit of God will lead and guide you to truth. So I could say 50 50 I was happy and hurt all at the same time. I was just like, man, the world is crazy. They spit you up, chew you out, don't even trip. She was like, just a pat on the back. I'm like, how about I get my promotion? How about I get back to like what I was getting? Maybe a bonus or two. None of that, right? few days later, I'm at the Christian bookstore, I open up, and Lord says, step out on water. And I knew what he meant. I left everything. 
for the ministry. If I didn't leave everything in the ministry, I'm not sitting here with y'all today. You understand? Ups and downs. So, with that being said, whatever you go through, God is saying you got to be a slave to him. Okay? So, part of being in the order of God is God will take you through a bunch of nonsense at the moment. You'll think like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. But God is just shaping you, perfecting you, getting you to the place where you can really be used. All right? That's really what be happening. All right? He, like the Bible says, he uses what? Everything. It says all things are for what? The good of those that what? That love God and are, call, and are called according to whose purpose? His purpose. Amen? All things. Good, bad, and ugly. God uses it. It kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. In the moment, I was just like, ooh, I was hot. Right? But then I look back and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I got through that. I know you, if you can get me through that, I can share that and say, okay, I'm at peace. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, what's the next part? Where are we at? 20? It says, for God is pleased. Sorry, it was 19. Yeah, it was first Peter uh, chapter one, or excuse me, it was chapter two, and it was verse 18. And we were at that last part where it says, uh, do what they tell you to do. This is really kind of dealing with like, you know, workers and things like that. But it says, for God is pleased. Uh, when conscious of his will, you patiently endure unjust treatment. Okay. So when you're in this mindset of like, I'm going to go through this regardless because I'm connected to God because God gives us the grace to endure. I know we don't seem like we can, but we can, we can do it. Okay. He says, for God is pleased when conscious of his will, you patiently endure unjust treatment. Of course you get no credit for being patient. <laughs> If you are beaten for doing wrong, but if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. Check that. If you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. Amen. It says, for God called you to do what? Good, not evil. Even if it means suffering, just as who? Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who also judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, so that we can be dead to sin. Okay? So that's the reason why he wants us to be dead to sin and live for what is what? Right. By his wounds or that Bible says by his stripes, you are healed. OK, he says once you were like sheep who wandered away. But now, hallelujah, you have turned to your shepherd. OK, the guardian of your soul. So Jesus is really the guardian of our souls. OK, so, yeah, you suffer in this flesh. But God is saying, hey, here's the order. Suffer in this flesh, you'll reign with me. You understand? Forever. So this is a part of the order of God. This is why we were trying to say earlier. Now, let's go to the next chapter. Because God did not want us to avoid this one. In God's house, there's order. But also in your private life, there should be order. Okay? Private life. And what I mean by private life is, none of us is really, y'all in my home right now, but like, I'm not in y'all homes. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. So it's just like, hey, but you guys know how y'all supposed to act, or at least you guys are going to start finding out that God wants order in your guys' life. Every aspect. You can't hide it. Okay. Like it's eventually going to rise to the top and you're going to have to deal with it. Okay. Whatever is done in the dark shall come to light. So when God starts talking about the order of things, this is what we're going to look at. So we look at the household of God because we're going to go over two scriptures. It's going to be this one. And if we get to it, it'll be Colossians 3. OK, I'm just putting that out there. All right. Now, in the same way, do you see how he connects it from the previous uh, chapter? He says, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. OK, now that is considered hate speech in this world. <laughs> in the current world we live in that's like hate speech what you saying i gotta submit to who him nah fam 
right? That's how most people, especially don't be the don't be the wife that make the money. Oh Lord. Then you really just and we know I we know personally, Lord forgive me. People the woman that usually makes the money be running the whole show. No matter what. I ain't gonna bring names up. She 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 always trying to be like, I already know who you're talking about. Look, because what happens is the 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 dude be like, he be wanting you understand, men be like. They they're gonna go crazy if they don't if they don't leave. I'm telling you, if they don't leave, they're gonna go absolutely nuts. I'm not saying that some even if they're whatever you want to call it because the people who talk about alpha beta males all that other nonsense. Look, you know you ain't heard of that stuff. It's alpha male. Well, I don't care. Whatever. Alpha it is. male. Look, bottom line is God has put men in a certain place. Like, they are going to feel like crap if they're not producing or doing something. Like, that's just what it is. They don't feel fulfilled. That's, that's most men. God, God already set that up in the garden, okay? But when they're with a person, they have to feel like they're trusted in being able to direct, you know, their, their relationship or being able to uh, direct their family, especially. Like, they feel like they're usurped, you know, they're going to go nuts. And usually... Because finances tends to rule most people. The person that runs and gets all the money be kind of making the decisions. But according to the word of God, ain't no finances even brought up here. You know what I'm saying? There's no outward worldly elements that we need to introduce into the things of God. In fact, the Bible says, Romans 12 says what? Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. The more you get taught about God's word and you start living it, you start to let God, the Bible says, let God transform you. I call it like, like surrendering to his renovation. Amen. You guys ever renovated your house or rearranged? Uh, some of y'all, you're like, no, nah, I ain't never, never renovate. Okay. Have you changed your room one time and you clean things up and move things and you're like, oh, this feel nice. This feel way better. But before when you had it and everything was just like on disarray, you had unnecessary stuff up in there, right? That's what God means. God means to rearrange things so now things are orderly. Amen? And so that's, that, and, and at least in, in his order, there's this transformation that comes by. All right, where are we at? Wives must, not optional. <laughs> not optional. Because here's the thing. God is saying, I put this order into place for a reason. We have to, as the people of God, we got to trust this order. I know it's hard because it's like, that's what be happening most of the time. I wouldn't call it wives, women, whatever you want to call it. But they'll be in their minds like, I know better. He don't. And then God be like, it don't matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. What matters is that if you surrender to this, this order... You're telling God, you know better. See what I'm saying? You're saying, God, you know better. You know why this is in, intact, right? That's how it got to go. It says, then even if, what? Some refuse to obey the good news, okay? The gospel, your what? Godly lies will speak to them without any words. Why did it say without words? I want to open up that can of worms. <laughs> Pop it up. Okay. Not saying that women be yapping, yapping, yapping. Wives be like, first thing. But what he's saying is that they think that that's the actual approach. Right? Most men, especially husbands, like the word of God is like spot on. And it's, it's funny because Peter's saying this, by the way. Peter's married. You understand? Peter's married family. So he knows. You know? He like, he probably hearing it like, it ain't the words that's going to change the dude, okay? <laughs> it's your actions. It's your, how you handle the situation. If you live in unto God. Now, trust me, we ain't going to beat up on all the wives all night. Amen. What's, what's happening here is that we need, <laughs> we need to follow this, this thing. Let's just, let's just comb through it a little bit, okay? It says, your godly lies will speak. 
So your lives, the way you live actually speaks to folks. Isn't that interesting? It's not what you're saying. They're seeing what you're doing. All right. It says they will be won over by observing your pure and reverent. Do you hear, hear that? Pure and reverent lives. Okay. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty and of what fancy hairstyles. Hold the phone. Don't talk about my hair now. We was in first Corinthians 11 and they was talking about the lady. You might as well shave your hair. off. I was joking with everybody. I made it a little before y'all was even here a few few weeks back. What was it, a month ago. And I asked y'all always talking about head coverings. But we were also talking about what if I just ask everybody up in this church. Today, hey, all the women. Y'all want to shave y'all heads off? They just looked at me like, we walking out right now. Why? Because your hair, the Bible says, a woman's hair is her glory. There's something about, like, don't mess with my hair. I mean, I know men, we don't really, like, we trip, but it ain't the same way. It ain't the same way. We can kind of, like, whatever, like, you know? Man, let's... <laughs> Nah, she ain't touching this. That's that's for Bori. Sorry, that's now nah, that's my um, that's 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 the my Puerto Rican barber. I, I I let him touch my head, but I need to go to him soon. Well, here's the thing. But that's the thing. The Bible says that a woman's hair is her glory. You understand? Most people distinctly, even if you don't have a lot of hair in your uh, hair on your head, there's something about a woman's like. She has something connected. Like, I don't know what it is, but men, it's like, it's easier. We can be like, eh, right? We chop it off, leg grow, chop it, whatever. But woman, I'm telling you right now, I, I knew people that did that because I because I remember, uh, I feel bad. I got to talk about people's stories. But I remember back in the day, somebody at the church, and I felt so bad for her, but I knew what she was trying to do. See, black folks, we y'all a little different. But I'm saying for black folks, we've kind of lived the life like depending on what era you lived in, like the 90s or the 80s, you know, either the men were like, you know, we kind of wore like our hair like short, you know, and then like a little fro or like I used to have the box fade, little Gumby haircut. Now I'm going way back. Right. Lines the whole nine. But I remember my parents. Uh, she, she, my mom, she used to put like a lot of relaxer, you know, like relaxer in her head to try to get all straight and stuff just cause the, that was just like the look. Right. And then somewhere around, I will say like maybe mid nineties, late nineties where people started to kind of go a little more. It's called, it's called natural, right? Like where their hair natural, things like that. And one of the women I remember at the church, she was a friend of my older sister. Um, and she was like, I'm gonna go natural. But the barber, the people, her, her stylist said, you got to cut everything off, though, because you got so much damage, right? And she cut it off, right? I didn't think she was really going to do it. I thought she was trying to just be like, oh, I'm just going to do it. When she cut it off, I felt so bad because, like, first thing, she looked different. Second thing, like, um, she walked in the church and then, like, one of the dudes that was, like, a friend of her, in the, it's kind of crazy, ended up being her boyfriend down the road. But he just straight laughed at her. Like, in front of the church, he just laughed. Like, we just have a conversation. We just talking. He just looked. He goes, ah, like that in front of everybody. And you know what happened? She walked out, and she cried. She cried bad. I went outside, and I felt like a bad. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know? So, I'm going to bring this up. Let me bring this up. Women's hair is valuable. Amen. There's something about it. Right. But when it's talking about adorning and and being so focused on it, it says expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. It's, it's basically saying that God, it's not saying that he doesn't mind the outward appearance. Right. He says you should clothe yourselves instead with what? The beauty that comes from within the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet what spirit, which is so precious to God. So God is concerned about what a something from within. And, and it is I'm not saying that 
people, I think sometimes, how do you say this? It's okay. I mean, in today's world, like feminists, you don't even know what a woman is now. Like, it's when, like, they, we used to have an issue with feminism. And I think it was, it's good to empower people, uh, women, because you can see in the Bible, there are, there are women of God, there are prophets and all different stuff. So I don't think that we shouldn't value each other regardless of our, um, you know, our gender. But what I believe the author, what he's trying to bring out here is the, your whole life doesn't need to be consumed with outward appearance. You need to be consumed with what? Being developed from the inside. Finding a place where you can be, you can operate in gentleness. Because I know women who usually think like, that's a strong woman. Because she outspoken and this and she do what she want to do and throw everything together. And it's like, okay, that's fine. But it's like, when, when he's saying here, he obviously, this is, a, you got to understand. Peter was obviously seeing something within these congregations. He was seeing a, an attitude that was formulating. All right. Where people were starting to get kind of like, all right, they're feeling themselves a little too much. You know, he's like, God ain't really tripping off all of that. Right. But what he is tripping off of is your what? He says, an unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. You know what I believe by quiet? I don't believe it's like you can't speak up. What I believe it is that you, you hold your peace like you have self-control. You understand? Like you're reserving yourself. You're like, I could talk right now, but I choose not to. What was, what was that? I always like to listen and uh, do. Well, I used to watch a lot of ESPN and Fox Sports. What's the dude with Skip Bayless? I don't like listening to Skip. Shannon, good old Uncle Sh Unk. Unk. All right. right? But it was something he said. He always had like this wise old like Southern proverb. <laughs> Every time he talked, it'd be hilarious. It's straight gold. But he said... He said something. He said, he said, my mama used to say, he said, it's not who what? He said, it's not who calls you. He said, it's who you answer to. And I was like, man, that's a, I was like, hold on. But it, what he was saying was like, it's, it's, he said, it's not what they call you. It's who you answer to. So it was like one of those things where it was like, you should be able to, I got you. We should be able to respond properly. No, I mean, everybody, you know, except for her. <laughs> we was all like here kind of like 630-ish. So let's write it for a second. So you should be able to control yourself. Amen? If the fruit of the Spirit is working through you, you should be able to like manage how you deal with a situation. Do you Have you noticed that everything is related to outward, what you say? how we operate, and then how what's going on from the inside, all right? Is that this is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful, okay? They put their trust in God, okay? That's the first thing. They put their trust in God and accepted, not rejected, accepted the authority of who? Their husbands. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. Ooh, I don't know, man, look. And today she said no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I'm, just, just I'm like, I rebuke you, Jezebel. No. You get elder for me. <laughs> she said no. Sorry. Nah, Sorry. two become Sorry. one flesh. We all right. But you gotta get that act right though. Nah. Um No, the 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 thing about that is that's how that's how loyal they were to the soil right there. Like they were like, hey, I, I really, really trust that God is leading this person. That's that's the thing. That's the reality is your mindset has to be like when you get into marriage, it's a I really trust that God is directing this person. Mm -hmm. This person is submitting themselves. That's what was so bad about the Corinthian church. The women were usurping. They're basically saying, no, I'm in control of my husband. And Paul was saying, uh, first thing, he said, Christ is in control of your husband. He said, you're, you're trying to be a covering over. You're taking Christ's place. That's not your place. He said, God didn't put this thing in that order. He said, that's coming from the devil. And it makes sense. What do you see with today? And trust me, you can see the opposite. He's the usurper. He's the perverter of things. That's why. And this is the cold part. It went to. Women, 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 everything, pro, pro, pro this. 
Now we can't even tell what a woman is. Like people have a, you ask what a woman is, they'd be like, I'd be like, can you explain what a cat is? They'd be like, yeah, four legs, a tail, says meow, whatever. And they'd be like, but then you ask what a cat is, uh, woman is, they'd be like, mm, I don't know. What do you mean by that? What the heck are you talking about? What do you mean by that? <laughs> like, we know what, we shouldn't be able to answer that very quickly. But that's how deceived this world is. We've gotten to a place where, you know, there's a dude who says, hey, I'm a woman. And then put on a little Speedo and try to swim with all the women out there and then break all these records. And you like, what is going on? Exactly. Be like that meme, like, you know, like, like, what's going on here? You know? And so that that's just that's just the stuff we're dealing with. But God wants to work on his family here. So as a family of God, we have to look at these things. He says, instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, called him master. He says, you are her daughters when you do when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. OK, now this is a I love this little part. This is that caveat. It says, in the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Oh, big time. That's where, that's where all of that, you know, you're going to make me, nah, that's got to cut out. Yeah, you're going to make me eggs and grits right now. Like, no, we ain't doing that. No, because that's what I'm saying. Men, men will take that and then run to the nth power with it and forget like, okay, who are you? They have, and they do. And this is what's unfortunate, because many men don't actually know how to operate as men of God. They're just men, but they ain't men of God. And so a man of God, God is saying, hey, this is the standard. He says, you have to honor your wives. So how you speak, how you handle her. Amen? It says, treat your wife with what? Understanding as you live together. It says, she may be weaker than you are. Okay. Do you guys know this term when it says the weaker vessel? You guys heard of that? She's the weaker vessel. I'm going I'm to I'm change this. Weaker vessel means you're weak too. You understand? Both of y'all is weak. Both of y'all is fragile. She's just more fragile. Meaning and you have to handle more care. It's like having like something like a beautiful, I feel bad. I remember when I dropped my, my mom's vase back in the day. <laughs> You know, I used to hate it because I was just like really clumsy as a child, you know, like I would just be like, you know, like what do you call it? A bull in a china shop, like literally find ways to just something would just break. And my mom would be like, just stand still. Don't do nothing. Right. But that's the thing. Uh, with this situation, God is saying you need to handle your wife with care. And I know many men, they don't do this. Husbands don't know that they have to do this. Like you have to look at it as like you are caring for her. You understand? You're not dragging her along. You're caring. That's why I tell people all the time. A husband, yes, you're leading, but really you're the servant. You're like at the bottom of the whole family. Like you're literally the foundation. You're not the top, like, oh, I'm top and everybody's tra traveling. No, you're really holding it all down. You should be, at least, if you're really doing your job, right? It says, she may be weaker than you are, but she is your what? What's that word? Equal. She's your equal. In what? In God's gift of new life. So the Bible says co-heirs. When I've had me and me and my wife, because you, I'm telling you right now, anyone is in marriage or had been married or in, you know, you won't have problems. The Bible says there will be trouble in the flesh if you get married. Okay. There ain't nothing, ain't no crystal stare, ain't nothing ever perfect. Right. You learn how to change over time. But you know, the one thing that helped me survive, at least with whenever I would have to communicate with my wife. And things we were not seeing eye to eye on things. I would go to God. And instead of trying to prove my point right. And her trying to get her point right. I would go back to the scripture. And I would remind myself my responsibility. I would say did I overstep? Did I not honor her? Did I not care for her like I was supposed to care? Did I forget? Did I lack the understanding? 
Because then if I messed up somewhere, I had to apologize there. I had to say, hey, I messed up. I talked to you wrong. I did this wrong. I did that wrong. And she knows. I'd have to just be like, all right, I messed up. I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have had you this way. I shouldn't have raised my voice this way. I shouldn't have said that. Then you can get to the next part. The bigger part is trying to encourage your spouse to do what? You're both co-heirs in Christ. You're both co-laborers in God. That don't change. You understand? So I have to see the spiritual as well. I can't just say, oh, she's my wife. She's just in this world and that. And she's the mother of my family, mother of my children. No, she's also a co-laborer of God. So now I got to speak to her inner man. I got to say, hey, this woman has gifts. She has talents. She has a purpose in God. And I have to help her. We have to try to do this thing together. Amen. Because what is Satan trying to do? Divide. Divide. Every house that is what? Divided will not what? Stand. That's why he's trying to destroy so many relationships. That's why he's trying to even get people, right? Like, hey, we just date around and stuff, but we don't think in our minds, hey, I really want to get married in the future. Or, hey, I want to, you know, men should be looking for wives. They shouldn't be like, oh, I was going to date around 15 other people and then I'm going to settle down when I'm 35. You don't got to do that. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You understand? Like, God wants us on our 1 Corinthians 7. Amen? And if any of y'all know that, go to that on your own time and go through that. But God wants us to make sure that we operate in this order. Amen? Mm-hmm. So men should do what? So we're not out of the gate. We, we have to make sure that we handle things properly. Now, it says, treat her as you should, right? So you're what? Prayers will not be hindered. This is where every man of God, especially you, a husband, you need to know that you're affected by this. Your relationship with God is affected by how you treat your wife. It's a cold part. Because I remember there's times where I was going to God and I'm like, man, I feel like he ain't even listening. And the Lord just checked me and say, because you're trying to play the wrong way. You need to go back to your wife. You need to apologize. You need to build her up. You need to wash her with the watering of the word. That's what the Bible says. It says that Ephesians 5, I'm not going to go to it now, but it says that what? Christ loved the church. He says, wives, submit unto your husbands as unto the Lord. He says, husbands, love your wives as what? Christ loved the church. He gave his life. And what we're supposed to do is if I present something, I'm saying I'm no longer trying to prove my point. I'm trying to remind ourselves that we are in Christ. And I have a responsibility to build you up with the word of God, to wash you with the word of God, to take care of you. That's a whole nother mindset. Right. And, and that has to be done with practicing. That's where that's where. And then if you don't do that as a husband, guess what? Your, your prayers will be hindered. It's not optional. It says will not. It says your prayers will be hindered. But if you treat her as you should, it says your prayers will not be hindered. Amen. Now. Everybody. Eight. Finally, all of you should be of what? One mind. Sympathize with each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. So have the same, not like we just like drones or something, but he's saying that you should have the same type of purpose. Right? Um, It says sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tenderhearted. Keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. So, if it so happens, because I've seen it happen, I don't care if it's small groups, big groups, mega churches, mm-hmm. what happens eventually is you say you're doing stuff and then somebody offends somebody. And then what happens? They leave. They leave and, oh, man, that church, they hurt me. You know what? You should have just dealt with the situation right out the gate instead of feeling all wounded, right? Because a lot of times we don't know how to process getting offended. We don't know how to just actually go back to the person and say, hey, man, you said this or you said that. Right. Even the Bible says if you have an ought against your brother, you're supposed to reconcile. You're supposed to before before you even come into the congregation. Like it's supposed to be a thing where it's like it's established right out the gate. And many of us have a hard time doing that. Because everybody has different opinions about things. Right. And so. 
the goal is like Paul, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, let love be your highest goal. Amen. Amen. So if we're seeing this here, where are we at? Nine. It says, don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Mm -hmm. It says instead, pay them back with what? A blessing. <laughs> oh, that's that's a tough one. But hey, it's doable. It says pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has what? Called you to do. We are called to pay people back. Not the way other people think, but with a blessing. Right. We are called to pay people back with what back with a blessing. It says that is what God has called you to do. And he will grant you his blessing for the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking. Oh, earthquake. What? No. What are you talking I'm Brother about? Daniel. <laughs> no, hold on. Did you move? No. I'm like, wait a second. This is here about to fall apart. I'm <laughs> like, man, that thing, like, it started moving a certain way. I was just like, oh, hold on. Watch out if I look up and I'm the one who felt it. No, I'm joking. I'll be like, earthquake. Y'all start running. Y'all don't even know what to do, huh? Go under the table. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> all right. Where are we at? Uh, it says, turn away from evil. Yeah. Look at that. It says, keep your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace. Ooh, this is good. So you got to search for peace. Amen? Mm -hmm. Meaning, and peace just doesn't automatically come. You got to search for it. It says, and work to what? Maintain it. You should be maintaining peace. Yeah. Maintain peace in your life. Maintain peace in your marriage. Maintain peace in your relationships. Maintain peace with your household. All right. It says uh, the eyes of the Lord watch. OK, y'all heard me now. This is the spirit. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do what? Right. And his ears are open to their prayers. So God is actually watching us that are really trying to live for him. He says, and he's actually listening to our prayers. If you're doing right. It says, but the Lord turns his face against who? Those who do evil. All right. It says, now who will want to harm you if you eat or if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer always be what? Ready to explain it. Okay. So when we start going out there evangelizing, or if anybody works in your circle and be like, hey, why don't you drink no more? Or why don't you do this no more? Why don't you do that? You got to be ready to answer them. And it ain't got to be like most. This... <laughs> Timothy is too much. You got that. But when somebody interrupt, or oh, excuse me. <laughs> Brother Timothy, come on, man. I'm going to give you the mic later. So when somebody asks you, basically, like, look, why don't you do what you do anymore? Don't hesitate. Just share with them your testimony. You ain't got to be like all, theolo all philosophical theologian on them. Just share with them straight up because most people really want to know. We was at the wedding and people were like, y'all ain't drinking the wine. And we was like, no, we got apple cider. I'm good. Martinelli's. Which wedding? You were in uh, April's wedding? And then they started asking. They was like, is it because, you know, of your religion? And I was like, no, it's because of uh, my relationship with God. Like, the Bible says be sober-minded. So I really follow that. Amen? And I like Martinelli's too. But Yes, we do. A lot of sugar in it, but still. Um, <laughs> all right. So this is what it says. Uh, where are we at? 16? But do this in a what? Gentle and respectful way. See, that's the thing where a lot of Christians mess up. I, I did it myself. I messed up so much in the beginning. We thing. like the moment somebody asks, you'd be like, "Hey, why are you trying to ask me? Don't ask me about my faith. Get my face." Oh, I like that. No, you know what I'm talking about. Just more harsh in the beginning. 
No, we just because we start thinking we can like we can put on trial. And it's like, no, God, people just want to know God's setting up an atmosphere where we can actually tell people about our faith. Amen. It said, but we're supposed to do it with what? Gentleness. And what, what's the other word? Respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Basically, don't give people ammunition. Don't give them no bullets in the chamber. All right. Because that's what they be trying to do. That's that's the first. You know the scrutiny the world has. The world can act like a fool. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the moment you slip up, they be like, ah, you a hypocrite. And they be like, y'all lying. Y'all live. Y'all live as hypocrites. Y'all don't ever tell the truth. Y'all lie like on a regular basis. Right? So it says, uh, what? Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good. Are you? I'm sorry. Did I go to the right place? Yeah, it is, it is better, it is, uh, remember, it is better to suffer for doing good, I'm at 17, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. Okay, it kind of repeat, repeats himself again from earlier. Christ suffered for our sins once, uh, for our sins, once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. And then what else was it say? He suffered, he suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Okay, this is when he went down into the, the, the bottom, the underworld. It says, those who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism. Er, this is where people try to mess up baptism and they think baptism is a symbol. Remember, I bring up to you guys all the time, 1 Peter 3.21. We're reading it now. Now you see the context of what he's saying. He's saying the flood was a cleansing of the evil of this earth. He's saying the flood was a picture, not baptism. You see what I'm saying? He's saying the flood is, a, is an illustration of what baptism is. Baptism, it says, which now saves you. Not by removing dirt from your body, because it used to be a cleansing ceremony for Jewish, you know, rituals. OK, that's what it was. All right. Even some people baptize people into their discipleship, like John the Baptist. It says, which now what saves you? I can't change that word. It says not by removing dirt from your body, but as a what response. Baptism is a response to God and now saves you. And it's what? It says, from a clean conscience. It's a response to God from a clean conscience. Why? Because your conscience, what is the conscience? It's the having the knowledge of sin. It's having the knowledge of right, uh, right and wrong. When we sin, we know we're in the wrong. So now we come before a holy God. When we get our sins washed away, when we go buried down into that water and come up a new creation in Christ. We're basically making a covenant, a response to God saying, hey, I want to be in you. I don't want to be in anything else anymore. I want to be exactly united with you. All right. That's what that means. It says it is effective, the baptism, because of what? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He's seated in the place of honor next to God and all of the angels and authorities and powers accept his what? Authority. Amen. All right. We're probably going to uh, continue on for next week. But. What I like for us to do, uh, since we saw that, I'll give you guys just a little teaser. Y'all run to Colossians 3 just for a second, because this is a good supporting scripture. You guys can look at this later, too, on your own time, but Colossians 3, yeah, that it relates to the uh, living a new life, putting away certain things. It's just an order that God wants you to live by, all right? Colossians 3 1 says this, since you've been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. It says, think, make your mind, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Okay, that is a guarantee. When Christ is revealed, 
is the children of God will share in the glory. Okay, that's what God wants. It says, so what? Five. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Whoa. Doesn't that sound like crucify the flesh? All right. Have nothing to do with sexual morality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't even come close to it. That's why I always tell people, take it out of the equation. If it's in the equation right now, take the variable out. Say, nope, we ain't doing that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right? So it's saying, don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of. Not later, not tomorrow. Now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and what? Dirty language. Amen? That's why I checked some other preacher. I ain't going to call nobody out. But I'm just saying, I had some people I was talking on the phone. And I was just like, hey, wait a second. I said, no, I didn't hear what I just heard. I called him out. He was like, man, I'm a grown man. I said, I don't care what you is. He said, I'm a granddad. I said, I don't care what you is. You a man of God. You better, that better not come out of your mouth again. I showed him the scripture, everything. He said, then, then all of us got lived by this. I said, we do. I said, that's why I'm calling you out. Because that's what we're supposed to do. The Bible says that we're supposed to judge righteously. People act like you can't judge at all. We, people judge people all the time. You know what they try to say? Only God can judge me. Uh, no. It said that we can. The Bible says the spiritual man can evaluate all things. Those that are natural can't evaluate anything. They're not even supposed to be able to judge us. They have no, they have no, no place of... Uh, no place of resonance. They don't have the Holy Spirit to be able to judge properly. All right. Now was the last part. Where are we at? Seven. Yes. You used to do these things when you when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. It says don't lie to each other for you have stripped off your old nature, sinful nature, and his wicked deeds. Ten. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. It says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, it says what? You must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience meaning in this is what you're wearing now you understand maybe we was talking about a tree you know a tree by the what fruit that it bears god is saying now i want you to operate and represent me but you got to represent me with the family of god too right you got to have tender-hearted mercy amen you got to have kindness you can't be ready to kill each other every little moment right you got to be humble you can't get your way all the time Right. You got to be gentle. You got to be patient. These are all things that come from the fruit of spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says make allowance for each other's faults. This is the big one. Make room for each other's faults, meaning in you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You're going to offend each other on accident, maybe even on purpose. All right. Because if you let your flesh go, that's what's going to happen. Y'all stay in the flesh. You're going to start offending things. You're going to start acting a certain way. Okay. It says, it says, forgive anyone who forgives you. Remember, the Lord forgave you. So you kind of, sort of should forgive others? No. You must forgive others. Mm -hmm. That's 100%. Not optional. It says, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Mm -hmm. For as members of one body... You are called to live in peace. Do you guys know that? Do you see a reminder? Now, Paul is writing this. Peter wrote the other one. Do you see how it says we're called to peace and we're called to what? Maintain it. Yeah. Okay. And always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your hearts. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Okay. Why do you think I'm doing what I'm doing? <laughs> I am trying to make sure consistently everyone's getting this word. 
It says, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Okay, we ain't doing that right now, but we do that on Sunday. Or you do that, you know, Sometimes. on your own time, in the car, driving, mm -hmm. you know, in the shower, wherever you got to do. You know, sing those songs that, 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 that you get, you know, from the Lord. It says, with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, now check this out. Whatever you do or say, whatever actions or things that come out of your mouth, it says, do it as a what? Representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. That pretty much covers like your whole life, right? He's saying you should be representing as an ambassador of Christ. Now, goes back to the wives. Oh, he said the same thing. You think Peter and Paul was just talking to each other? Like, hey, man, I'm about to preach this. I'm about to write this letter. You know, just call, well, you got any tips? No, they was just saying, look, I'm going to tell you right now. I've had people say, they'd be like, man, I heard that teaching. It sounded like this one over here. I'm like, I, was, I never even knew about that person. They'd be like, that's just awesome. I'd be like, well, there's only one Holy Ghost. Like, it's the same author. Mm -hmm. We just different pens, you know? God uses different, different men, but it's the same author. So it says, why submit to your husbands as it is fitting to those who belong to God or belong to the Lord? Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Do you see how you kind of summarize what Peter was saying? Yeah. He didn't say optionally. He said, never treat them harshly. This is, this is be like that mic drop moment. So it says, children, always obey your parents. Hey, y'all hear that? No. <laughs> children, always. Now, sometimes, always obey your parents. For this pleases the Lord. You want to please God? Obey your parents. Period. Zip, shut, that's it. Done. He laughing because he says, fathers, do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. Now, I know myself, I had to get I had to learn this because I had parents that were just like, you know, they was different. You understand? So I had to learn how to like, how do I balance? Because this is what most men, this is how we are. At least at least for fathers, you you have this balance, especially in God. I, I was talking to the kids the other night. I said, I'm trying to balance of, I got to train up the children in the ways of the Lord, but I ain't your friend. I ain't your buddy. You understand? And I also have to do what? Have to discipline. But you got to make sure that how you do things don't turn into like, uh, what was the term? Remember when we were in Ephesians? It says exasperate. Yeah. yeah. Exasperate is to like annoy them. It's almost like, it makes me think of like, What's even worse, extra discouraging, especially like abusive or like, uh, like I remember people are like, you know, I had people I knew that had like parents that were alcoholics and they come in the house and they just like change the whole mood. You know what I mean? Because all they were doing was they would hate themselves so much and they would tear everybody down, right? Tear everybody down. And he's saying the father, it's our responsibility to build up our family. That's just the bottom line. You know, you become a dad, you, that's what you're going to have to do. All right. It says, don't aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. It says, slaves, obey your earthly masters to everything you do. That's kind of like workers to masters or workers to bosses. Try to please them all the time. Not just when they're watching you, serve them sincerely because you're with your reverent fear of the Lord. Work, will, work willingly at whatever you do as though you are working for the Lord rather than people. Okay. So when we go to our jobs... As much as, or even like clients, like I, I, I mean, she knows that one client. Oh, God, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> See, I don't really have bosses. Like the Lord Jesus is my boss. Amen. But I've had some clients that had these unrealistic expectations, right? She had checked me because I was emailing this one and he was just like, she was just like, I can see the tone and how you emailing him. It don't sound like, but I didn't care. I was just like, sometimes I'll go there with people and just be like, hey, no, nah, you need to relax how you coming at me because what you asking is just not out of pocket, you know? And so, but there's another side of it where it's like, okay, I got to do this unto the Lord. Like God help me to do this stuff unto the Lord. When I got to fulfill something, when you got to work unto God, do it unto the Lord. 
Even if it's frustrating in that moment, you need to get in that moment. Like, okay, God, you gave me this responsibility. You gave me this job. You gave me this task. I'm going to do it unto you. You understand? You ain't doing it just to get a pat on the back. You're saying, Lord, this is what you've, this is a slice of my life that you're allowing me to make some income. I'm going to do it unto you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, you know how most of us time we look at our jobs, I ain't going to lie. We'd be like, oh, I can't wait to be off work. We looking at the time like, you know, that's how it used to be. You used to be, you, you definitely used to be like that. I'm clock out. We used to work for each other, by the way. That's how this all started. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, we out of here. Sorry, I know I'm holding y'all hostage. She like, it's time to go. All right, last part, where are we at? 24. Uh, 24. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. Thank you, Lord. And that master you are serving is Christ. That's the ultimate goal. Amen. What are you doing on this earth? He's saying, you're going to get a reward for serving me. He says, but if you do what is wrong, you will be paid back. What? For the wrong you have done. For God has no favorites. All right. Let's wrap it up there. So in closing, what you're responsible over it that God gives you, he will give you more as long as you follow these orders. Unless you get your life in order and you make sure you follow these things. You're saying, hey, I'm maintaining peace. I'm submitting to authority. I am honoring. I'm living an honorable life. <laughs> I'm not giving people ammunition to make accusations against me because it will happen. Accusations come. Like, that's not even like, okay, who's the accuser of the brethren? Satan. You don't think he works on people to make you look like you're not a godly person? That's constantly what's going to happen. They're going to find little tactics here and there. And if it happens on your job, the Bible says what? Whatever happens, it says if you're suffering for Christ's sake, like it's better to do that than to just be doing it because something you put on yourself. Amen. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, why don't we do this? <laughs> why don't we do that? I never even got this stuff to cast on the thing. This thing all acting all whack. But uh, any questions? No. Nope. Everybody understand? Okay. So like anything random just popped up? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, we'll, we'll be up out of here. All right. Any any prayer requests before we get up out of here? People we want to pray for? Family? Nothing? For Friday for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. You all right, man. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> you just talk about <laughs> like... No, I'm good. You're you all right. Break room. Like, yeah, no, I'll pray. I'll, I'll, I'll pray. Yeah, how about you guys? Anything? Family? No? Right now? We're going we to sleep well. I'll, I'll pray. Okay. All right. Let's look to the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you again for your word. Lord, help us, Lord Jesus, every single one of us, Lord, to live honorable lives, Lord, unto you. Um, I just ask, Lord Jesus, that you help us to be in order. Lord, expose and show every single part of our lives, Lord. And in fact, thank you, Holy Ghost. Any blind spots that we have in our lives, Lord, expose them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to live in the light, Lord. We don't want to live in darkness. Lord, there's things that we're unaware of in our lives, Lord Jesus, that you want order, that you want repair, that you want healing in. Lord, I just ask that you come and invade every single person's life, Lord Jesus, that we can get the healing, that we can get the restoration, that we can get things and, and operate in decency and in order, Lord. And I just ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you work on each of these families, Lord, keep them protected, keep them um built up in you i pray right now uh that you give brother daniel lord the wisdom how to uh develop and 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 pour into him uh uh the word that you want him to speak this friday about lord um i pray lord jesus that it be powerful lord jesus that it be um on time lord jesus for the people to hear and i pray in the name of jesus lord that we operate in um and support and love for one another and for what you're doing in this uh ministry and for the people that really want to serve um, for your kingdom, Lord. So we thank you again. I just ask, Lord Jesus, that your power and your protection and your grace be with us in all that we do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Yay. All right. Press the thing. Did he even...